we now have a, a system of three differential equations here. Um, and so I want to show how these ideas of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors in two by systems, two by two systems, scale up to um, more uh, systems of more differential equations. So this, for example, would say x prime is equal to x plus 2y plus 2z, y prime is equal to 2x plus 3z, and z prime is 2x plus 3y. And so if we wanted to solve that system of differential equations, um, we would first want to write it out as a matrix equation like it is given here. Um, but then all of the steps are the same. So for example, step one is find the characteristic equation. And so if we've got a larger matrix, we don't change the way we find the characteristic equation. We still take the determinant of the matrix that we get when we subtract this undetermined lambda from the diagonal entry. So we would get 1 minus lambda, 2, 2, 2, 0 minus lambda, 3, 2, 3, and 0 minus lambda. And we set that equal to 0. And so now when we take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we're going to take 1 minus lambda, and then we're going to multiply that by the determinant of this matrix inside of here. So we're going to multiply that by uh, minus lambda times minus lambda minus 9. Then I'm going to take 2, change its sign to negative 2, and then multiply that times the determinant of the matrix 2, 3, 2, minus lambda. And that's where this comes from. And then I take 2 and multiply it by the determinant of this matrix over here, which would be the 6 minus a minus 2 lambda. And we set that equal to 0. And so now, um, if you have a 3 by 3 matrix, if we group all of our terms together, the resulting equation is not going to be quadratic, but it's going to be a cubic equation in lambda. So in this case, I would get minus lambda cubed plus lambda squared plus 17 lambda plus 15 all of that is set equal to zero. And um, now we, we factor this, which is harder when you've got cubic polynomials, but here this can factor into um, lambda plus three, lambda plus one, and five minus lambda. Uh, so from this, we can see we've got three eigen, distinct real eigenvalues of minus 3, minus 1, and 5. And so if we're asked about the stability, for example, of this um, equilibrium at 0, 0, 0, we would say that's a saddle point. So the, the origin here, which is 0, 0, 0, would be a saddle point. It's not stable because we have one of the eigenvalues which is positive. Um, so when you say saddle, this means that it's unstable. Okay, and so now that we've got our eigenvalues, let's go ahead and find the corresponding eigenvectors for each of these and then give our general solution in vector form. So we've got the, the same system that we've been working with before and we, we've got these three eigenvalues. Um, so let's take, for example, the first eigenvalue, say lambda is equal to minus 3. So now what I'm going to do in order to find the eigenvector for this is I'm going to subtract minus 3 from the diagonal entry. So in other words, I'm going to add 3 to each of the diagonal entries. So that would give me a 4. I leave those alone. I have a 2 and a 2. I have a 2 here. I add 3. 2, 3, and I add 3. Okay, so all I've done so far is added 3 um, to each of the diagonal terms. And now we're going to figure out what are the conditions on this vector that I'll call ABC so that when I multiply that new matrix times this vector ABC, I get um, 0, 0, 0. So this is going to give us a corresponding system of equations that looks like 4a plus 2b plus 2c is equal to 0, 
and um, the next equation would be uh, 2a plus 3b plus 3c is equal to 0, and we can see that the last equation is exactly the same as the previous one. So really, we've got two equations since the, the last equation is uh, redundant with, with the second equation. And so if we wanted to solve this system, I'll, I'll leave it for you to verify, but you could check that um, first you would see that we need um, whatever b is. It should be the exact opposite sign of c. And then from that condition, you can then check that we would also need a to be equal to 0. So uh, one eigenvector for this eigenvalue would be a being 0. We can set b equal to 1, and therefore c would be minus 1. Um, OK, then um, we can do the same for the eigenvalue of, say, 5. If I wanted to do that one next, um, what I would do is subtract 5 from each of the entries along the diagonal of the original matrix. So I would have 1 minus 5, which gives me minus 4, and then 2 and then 2, and then I've got 2, and then minus 5, 3, and I have 2, 3, and minus 5. And so now I would want to find conditions on some vector that has components a, b, and c, so that when I multiply that matrix by the vector, I get 0, 0, 0. And so this corresponding system of equations would be minus 4a plus 2b plus 2c is equal to 0, and then we've got 2a minus 5b plus 3 is equal to 0, and then 2a plus 3b minus 5c is equal to 0. And we'd want to solve this system uh, simultaneously. So for example, uh, what I could do, various ways of doing this, just focusing on these two equations, I can subtract those two equations. So the a's would cancel. We would get minus 8b and plus 8c is equal to 0. So that would tell me, um, first of all, we need b to equal c. And then uh, plugging that condition into the very top equation, you uh, could convince yourself, therefore, um, that A would need to equal those values as well. So for this eigenvalue of 5, our eigenvector, for example, would be 1, 1, 1, or any multiple of that would suffice. Um, and so for the very last one, the algebra kind of follows pretty similarly to these two cases. So I will um, just tell you what the eigenvector is, and you can verify that that would work. But in this case, the eigenvector of 1 minus 1 half minus 1 half would be a one possible eigenvector for that eigenvalue of minus 1. So once we've got all of that information, we can now express our final answer in vector form by saying, I'm going to take C1, and let's say the first eigenvalue was minus 3, and its corresponding eigenvector was 0, 1, minus 1. And then uh, next up, let's say we've got the eigenvalue of 5. So I'm going to take C2 times the eigenvector for that, which um, was 1, 1, 1 is one possible eigenvector times e to the 5t. And then finally, we take C3 times the eigenvector, which is 1 minus 1 half minus 1 half times e to the minus t. So that would be my uh, general solution for this. We have three arbitrary constants. Um, and once you start going up to systems of more than two equations, the guess what the solution is and plug it in and match up the conditions on the arbitrary coefficients, that method gets a little bit tedious. And in fact, 
being more um, comfortable with the linear algebra and the eigenvectors certainly helps much, much more as the systems get larger and larger.